ChatGPT gets an API, Microsoft researches new multimodal large language model Cosmos One, why is Python so popular anyway? And some picks of the week that will help you redecorate your favorite room. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. Uh, my shirt this week is from my friends at the Icon Factory. Uh, this is their late, great Twitter client, Twitterific's logo, Ollie. Twitterific was an app that was unfortunately end of life at the end of January after Twitter shut down third-party clients. And uh, Ollie, this character, was in fact, uh, fun fact, the original bluebird motif um, for, for Twitter. That's where it came from. So hats off to Ged and Craig and Talos and the rest of the crew for 16 years of OG Twitter goodness. Um, and uh, thanks for the shirt. All right, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about, so let's get into it. Warning, this is an AI heavy week because as I've said before, AI is looking like the future that we were promised by Web3 two years ago. First up, OpenAI has released APIs for its ChatGPT and Whisper models. And since it was released back in December, ChatGPT has exploded in usage over the last three months. And now there's a new API that'll make interacting with it that much better. And here's how OpenAI describes the new API on their blog. Uh, it uses GPT 3.5 Turbo, and this is the same model used in the ChatGPT product. It's priced at uh, 0 .002 cents per token, per thousand tokens rather, and that's 10 times cheaper than their existing GPT uh, 3.5 model. And uh, they also say that it's their best model ever for many non-chat use cases, and they've seen early testers migrate from the text DaVinci 003 model to GPT 3.5 Turbo with only a couple of adjustments necessary. All right, so 0 0.002 cents per thousand, that's like two tenths of a penny per thousand tokens, if I'm doing my math correctly. That's really great pricing, I'm not gonna lie. The API documentation has more details about how tokens work and how you can use OpenAI's um, open tokenizer to figure out how many tokens you're going to consume with your prompts and responses. And in addition to ChatGPT, Whisper, the speech-to-text model that was open sourced back in September, also um, has a new large V2 model available through its API and it's also priced really well at six tenths of a penny uh, per minute. So I've got a link to the OpenAI platform docs in the show notes and the description down below so that you can check them out for yourself and um, a link to the OpenAI cookbook, which is on GitHub, which has some really great examples. But I'm already seeing tons of people building great stuff with this and it's been like 48 hours. Uh, shout out to Greg Bouges, who documented how to build a CLI chatbot with the ChatGPT API and Python in just 16 lines of code. And he documented all of this on his blog. So I've got a link to that uh, down below too, but I really loved his write-up and I'm so excited about what we will see next. Speaking of ChatGPT stuff, a quick shout out to the website jailbreakchat.com, which features a collection of various ChatGPT prompts that can jailbreak the chatbot to get different styled results. It's quirky and fun. Uh, the Bobby Knight version is really funny. Uh, okay, so large language models like GPT-3 are cool, but you know what might be even cooler than that? Multimodal large language models. Microsoft Research released a paper this week called Language is Not All You Need, Aligning Perception with Language Models, and in it, it describes how its new MLLM is something that can respond to language prompts and visual cues. So you could imagine this being used for things like image capturing and answering visual questions. And I've got a link to the paper down below and the Microsoft GitHub repo um, where stuff is going to be, where that's gonna be the home of some of this Cosmos One stuff at some time um, in the future. I'm really, really excited. This is an exciting time. All right, now let's move into some GitHub news. My girl Roselle Scarlet did a deep dive on why Python has continued to grow in popularity over the last 30 years. And it includes a really fun demo where Roselle uses GitHub Copilot to build a rock, paper, scissors game. Always fun. Now, one of the big uh, reasons behind Python's enduring popularity is the AI and ML stuff that we're seeing. But putting that aside, as somebody who has always loved scripting languages, the most, seeing Python continue to gain in popularity really warms my heart. So I've got a link to that blog post in the show notes and the description. 
And in some other news, there's a new GitHub Actions importer that's now generally available. So if you've been interested in GitHub Actions, but you're coming from another CI CD tool like Azure DevOps or Circle CI or Travis CI or Jenkins, you want to check this out. And also, if you're using GitHub hosted uh, runners for GitHub Actions for Mac OS in X64, we've just released a public beta with some powerful new runners that have really improved performance. And I've got links to both of those announcements in the show notes and the description down below. And now it's time for my GitHub Project Spotlight, where I highlight a community project that I thought was especially cool. And this one is a repeat from our pal Hassan, who works in DevRel at Vercel. You might remember him from his AI Commit project from a couple of weeks ago. Well, Hassan is back, this time with a project called Room GPT. And Room GPT uses a machine learning model called ControlNet to generate variations of various rooms. So you can upload a photo of a room and get back an, uh, an AI suggestion for how that room could be redecorated. It's very cool. Uh, you can check out some of my, uh, the examples from my coworkers at GitHub. It works pretty well, sometimes better than others. But you can play with it at roomgpt.io, or you can deploy it yourself from Hassan's GitHub repo because he made all of this open source, and I think that is beautiful. So I've got links to all of this in the show notes and the description. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So. We're gonna go along with the whole stuff to redecorate theme. And I had to include these new Wally and Eva figures from Lego's Brickheads line. Um, they're already on back order in the United States, so I'm not gonna get mine for like 60 days. But yes, this is what's gonna go up in my office and these are super, super cute Legos. What cool stuff are you looking forward to building with the ChatGPT API? Let me know that and uh, any of your other thoughts on any of our other stories in the comments down below. That's going to do it for me this week. If you liked this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.